Hello, good evening everybody. Welcome to Song Living Room. Really excited because this is a brand new month and we got a brand new topic and we're so excited and ready to dive into it. All right, anyway, my name is Clement. I'm one of our pastors here. And if this is your first time watching Song Living Room, we are basically uh, a church from uh, Sokol Bidi Church. And... <laughs> And we are, we, are, we are based in Singapore, and we are just a church that loves the presence of God, all right? And, you know, uh, every month we go, uh, go through a very uh, exciting topic, and we just finished last month's topic, and we are into this month's topic, and it's called the anointing and authority. Wow, it's really, uh, sounds really heavy. We're already going to unpack it uh, over the course of this month, all right? So uh, before I continue to kind of start the ball rolling, I'd love to say a warm welcome to everybody. And I want to, you know, welcome my two colleagues who has always been doing this uh, with me and always really fun to, to, to do this. All right. So first of all, I'd like to introduce everyone's uh, favorite dancer. All right. Pastor Patrick. All right, Woo! good <laughs> good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you for being on time. Thank you for joining us for this series, and it's an exciting time. Uh, this is a very exciting topic. This is a topic that uh, really captured my interest when I was just, I think, 16, 17 years old. So I, will, I remember reading up a lot of uh, books on the anointing, and... And so it is uh, it is really something that we are looking forward to share um, what what we have learned and experienced about the anointing of God and the authority of Christ. Pastor Jeff. Uh, good to have all of you back. Um yeah, I agree. There's actually really a lot of things to talk about anointing and authority. And uh, it's actually one of the things that is God has anointed Jesus to do is to destroy the works of the enemy. Uh, it's, it's anointing and authority is linked to a victorious Christian life. And so if you, uh, and it's good to understand. It's good to understand what God has given to you so that you can move in it. Uh, it's good to understand uh, the resources and what you are wired to do, and uh, we are about to explain these two very big words. And uh, uh, and of course, many people have different ideas when they say, "Oh, the anointing is on you." Uh, <laughs> sometimes, uh, I mean, if you have been to charismatic meetings or kind of costume meeting long enough, you see like, and when people are shaking, you say, "Yes, the anointing is on you, sister." Yes, yes, yes. And, uh, and well, in that, in a way. Um, yeah, when the anointing comes, there's manifestation. But you know what? That is really the secondary. Uh, that, that's actually secondary. Uh, that is just uh, a, a reaction or it, it's just uh, a re reaction. We, we, we judge by a reaction. Oh, say, go ahead. That is called anointing. Uh, you know, uh, that is, it's actually more than that. Yeah. You reacting to the anointing is uh, the manifestation is not the anointing, but the anointing has manifestation, and sometimes we judge anointing by manifestation. And so, oh, that person. I also know that people who just pretend to get sling. I mean, for uh, <laughs> I, I know in my early days there was this guy that uh. He's an American preacher. He came and, uh, I mean, uh, he lay hands and uh, they were, we were all in front and this row and he lay hands and uh, I could see that he was shouting and uh, he was like laying hands and he was like fire, like, in a way like he's, uh, there's more, a lot of saliva coming out. So me and my friend says, oh, oh man, like, I think uh, we, we uh, like he's coming. I don't want to get spit at. Like, I mean, some of us, uh, when we pray for people, we, we <laughs> like, not now, like uh, there's social distance, you know. But, uh, and four of us, like, okay, we, uh, you know what? I'm not going to hit by saliva. But we just, we would rather get slain first. So we just pretend to get slain <laughs> to kind of avoid that. <laughs> uh, and so, um, yeah, they can say that anyone who goes down, oh, that's an anointing. But no, it's actually more than that. 
And a lot of times we see manifestation as anointing. Yes, but uh, you need to understand manifestation, manifestation, anointing is anointing. The anointing produces manifestation. So it doesn't mean that a person is not manifesting, they are not anointed. And, uh, and, and so we are here to dispel some uh, lies and also kind of tell you what actually it is anointing and authority. So uh, buckle up the seat belts and uh, we are going to go. So, yep. All right. All right. Pra- praise the Lord. <laughs> well, um, I, I remember, right? <laughs> I remember when I was like, uh, um, when I turned 16 and at that time, I think I just finished my O-levels. So, um, that uh, Benny Hinn came to town. All right, not sure whether which year, which year? Wow, which year? I think it's about 1990. Uh, 1990, 1990, 1991, about oh, okay, there. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay, yeah, it's about there. Those few years, okay. So, um, yeah, Ben, so Benny Hinn came to town and he was preaching at that time at the Singapore Indoor Stadium. Yeah, you remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Singapore Indoor Stadium. Yep. So, uh, si- Singapore Indoor Stadium con- can contain like 10,000 people, 12,000 people. Yeah. Uh, so, at that time, I, I, that was the time where I first got on fire for God. So, I was very hungry for... Um, uh, for the move of the Holy Spirit, and I was very hungry to uh, to to see God move, and 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 so I went I went down for that meeting, f- for um, yeah, uh, to hear Benny Hinn. I didn't know who he was, and uh, I remember I had to queue for hours uh, outside. Indoor stadium, the queue was really so long. Uh, uh, yeah, more than an hour. Yeah, to queue to get inside. Yeah, and and I just went. Yeah, I went with a friend. Yeah, with 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 one one of my uh, guy friends, and uh, like the worship went on for I think it two hours. Like so, the the uh, the local worship leader, the Singapore the leader, leads worship for an hour. Then after that, when he finishes, Benny Hinn's worship leader comes and lead worship f- for another half an hour. Then Benny Hinn comes. By the time Benny Hinn comes to stage, it's like one and a half hours, maybe two hours. Then so I expect him to preach, but he's not preaching. He starts singing again. <laughs> So I'm just down there, and the whole time it's like singing and singing and singing. Like, like I I thought when the f- Singapore worship leader was done, uh, it's preaching time. But no, no, no. <laughs> uh, s- another worship leader comes. It's Benny Hinn's worship leader. He sings, and then then there's a worship item. Then Benny Hinn, Hinn comes, you know, with that time all his wavy, fluffy, big hair. Yeah, and he was in a white suit. I mm-hmm. thought he was was going to preach, but no, he he breaks out into song. Uh, was sing things like, uh, Holy oh yeah, Holy Spirit, thou art well, come in this place, and he he'll start waving his hands for you guys to know, right? Waving his hands like he's conducting a choir, right? In this place, right? <laughs> so he, he goes on singing and, and and then he went on to singing hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that hallelujah songs go slower and slower. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right? I don't, I, I don't know how many of you have uh, been, to I've been, to I've been to a Benny Hinn meeting, right? Yep. So the, 
the 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 whole the so the hallelujah song goes slower. Hallelujah, hallelujah, right? And then it's like it never ends because he sings hallelujah like twenty times, like you know. Then he will change the melody of the hallelujah, hallelujah. You know that it goes. He goes to counter melody. He goes to counter counter melody. He goes to all sorts of harmony. Sing hallelujah, going high and hallelujah. Then ch- then go up one key. Hallelujah. And, and so after, so, so it's like, oh man, when is this going to end? It's like he, he just sing hallelujah forever. <laughs> uh. So I don't know whether you've been to uh, a, a Benny Hinn meeting, but uh, I was a Presbyterian. <laughs> so it was very, very new to me. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and after maybe like three hours of worship, he started preaching. He preached a short sermon. Uh, and then all of a sudden, he said, Oh, God told me that someone, he starts giving words of knowledge, right? There's someone here who has a heart attack. You no, know, uh, he starts naming co- conditions. There's, there's someone getting healed of, 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 of ankle pain. You know, that there's someone here in, in the 20 years ago, you had this issue. And people started coming to the front and say, oh, I'm the one, I'm the one, I'm the one. He, they, uh, they get up to the stage and, and then he'll say, oh, bl- bless you. he get them to share the testimony. Oh, uh, what do you feel? Oh, I, I, I experienced this heat in, in, in my heart. Bless you. My brother, he blows. And the guy hits the floor. Comes the next lady. Oh, what, 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 what happened to you? What happened to you? Oh, I, I, I felt heat around my lower back, and now my lower back has no more pain. Oh, bless you, sweet lady. <laughs> Hits the floor. And, and, and so I, I was, I was at my seat, and I, and I was looking at the the stage, and this. Is the first time I see people slain. I was freaking out on my seat. Right? Because I'm a 17-year-old Presbyterian boy. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, me and my friend sitting at our seats, we are thinking to ourselves, is this staged? Did he pay all these people to come up to give all these fake testimonies? And there were like over 20 people coming up one by one, giving testimonies, and he'll blow at them, wave at them, you know, uh, <laughs> touch them on the forehead, and one by one they went... <laughs> So, me and my friend, we were looking and we, we were going, wow, this is crazy. This is crazy. Wow. He, 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 did he really pay so, so many people? <laughs> yeah. yeah, bribe all these people. And then he turns to the crowd and he says, do you, do you want this? And the crowd was saying, yes, we want. Are you hungry? Yes. And then, so he, he points to one, one section of the crowd, stand up, and the whole section stands. And he waves, and the whole section falls. And, and he, he turns to the other side and, and says to that section of the crowd, 
Do you want this? And they say, we want. No. Stand. And, and this is like, this is like a few hundred people, you know, one section is like a few hundred people, and then they so all stands. And and, and and then he say and, and then he shows, he holds his arm. Take it! Take it! And the whole section goes down. And he does that section by section, you know, uh, and and just like hundreds of people going down each time. And me and my friend, we were looking at this. He cannot be bribing everyone like this. Right? And finally, he's, he says, now every, everyone stand up. Do you want it? The crowd was going, yes, yes, yes. The entire, the, 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 the entire crowd that stood up like it's, it's like 10,000 people. It's, it's a full house. It's like 10,000 people in the stadium all standing up. And he says, close your eyes. At the count of three, I'm going to blow. So all of us close your eyes. Close your eyes. Lift up your hands. It's a one, two, three. And the moment he blew, I felt like something hit my, my forehead. Like, I just felt something like hit my forehead. I, I didn't fall. And I didn't know whether, is that my imagination? And so I, I opened my eyes. The moment that happened, I opened my eyes. And I saw one, I saw one third of the entire auditorium, one third of the, the crowd fell over. Like one third of the crowd out of 10,000, that's like 3,000 people. One blow, 3,000 people fell at the same time. And that's why I left that meeting that night, like, just totally mind boggled. I bought I I bought his uh, book uh, that night. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Went back. I read the entire book. The presence of God was so great as I read it. Then after that, I read his second book, which was called The Anointing. And I began to have a hunger to know what is this all about? What is the whole? Because he talked about Holy Spirit as his friend. The way Benny Hinn described Holy Spirit, it's like, Holy Spirit is my best friend. His first book is written, Good Morning Holy Spirit, because every, every day, the, the first day when he awakens, like, uh, no, like every morning when he wakes up, the first thing he says is, good morning, Holy Spirit. Why? Because to him, Holy Spirit is his best friend. And when I read his, his first book, Good Morning, Holy Spirit, it really motivated me because uh, he talked about how when he first encountered the Holy Spirit, he was spending eight hours a day in the presence of God. And... Uh, and I remember in that season how I would spend hours praying in tongues because of the hunger that was within me. And I thought at that time, the anointing was all about getting people slain. The anointing was this power you have that when you hurl your hands, it's like hurling spiritual fireballs and, 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 and people toppling it over one by one. Boom, 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 boom. I thought, wow, that's the anointing. That's pure power, Holy Spirit power. But I realized, no. That, that is what the anointing does, but that is not the anointing. That is, that is a manifestation of the anointing. That is 
how the anointing can look like and the result of anointing, but it does not always look like that. Mm. And the anointing that is on Benny Hinn is unique. And the anointing that is on Jeff is unique. The anointing that is on Clement is unique. The anointing on every one of us is at the same time the same and unique. It has is unique in our expression. That all of us have the Holy Spirit right. as the anointing, but it's unique as in expression. And so, <laughs> so it's, it's <laughs> and so when I, I remember that uh, w- like Jeff and I used to go on mission trips together and there were so many meetings when w- w- when he ministers is in, to, the, to the crowd, everybody starts b- breaking out in laughter. And then I take over and then ev- everybody no, usually it's I. You I first. I I start. So everybody starts breaking out in tears. Everybody is like ninety five percent. Yeah. <laughs> it's like whoa! Everybody is like crying, bawling. Their their eyes are ah, like wailing. You know, and and and, <laughs> and then Jeff comes up, and then the same people that's wailing and bawling. They start laughing. They start like crushing their, their their stomach, rolling on the floor. and go ha 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 ha. Okay, okay. They sound better than that. I, I yeah, that's a, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that sounds like an evil evil spirit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That boat. Both are, both of us carry anointing, and both of us is harnessing the anointing in the air. But but when it when it comes up, when it flows, it's different. The result is different. The flavor is different. Yet it, yet we are tapping in the same source, in the same river. And it's been, it's really been about 30 years since I went to that Benny Hinn meeting. Mm. Yeah. It's been about 30 years since I read Good Morning Holy Spirit. Yeah, I'm that old. Yeah. <laughs> 30 years. <laughs> it's a ever it's it's a journey that I continue to embark on to learn what the anointing is about. Mm. To understand what am I carrying. To, to realize that I already have the anointing on me. It's not something I chase. but It's not something that I chase on the outside from meeting to meeting. But it's something I discover on the inside from day to day in my time with Him. And so, yes, it's a dis- journey of discovery that you are already anointed. It's a journey of going deeper inward. That is an inward journey. It's not, it's, not, it's, it's not pursuing him by going from meeting to meeting, asking anointed men of God for impartations. It's not about that. But as you go deeper... You begin to tap into that source that there is a well within you. The anointing 
comes from the well within you. Isaiah chapter 12, verse 3, that, that uh, they, will, they will draw with joy the waters out of the wells of the heart. That there's a well within us. It's good about going deeper, digging deeper within you. It's a discovering the anointing within. <sighs> Pastor Jeff, we like to yeah. to share. Take take from here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll take from here. Um, now uh, I'm going to go through some scriptures, and from that scriptures, you will understand what the anointing is. And uh, first of all, um, you we we need to understand that. Uh, when you talk about Jesus Christ, right? Christ is not his last name. Yeah. <laughs> so Christ is not his last name. That that word Christ is called the anointed one. Yeah, that is a Simon, the anointed one. Yeah. Uh Christos, uh in Greek, it actually means the anointed one. So it's Jesus the anointed one. Yeah. And so and so from that reference. You will understand what. Okay, so then you need to understand like what is Jesus anointed to do. That's the most important thing. What is Jesus anointed to do, right? If Jesus is the anointed one, what is he, is he anointed to do? What is the assignment that God has given him? What is the anointing for? Uh, we know that the first time when the Holy Spirit came upon Jesus was actually in uh, during the water baptism. When he got baptized by John the Baptist, when he arose from the water, the Holy Spirit came like a dove and rest on him. Yeah, and from that point onwards, uh, and, and you, you you need to understand that from that point onwards, right? Uh, there was a very interesting scenario that happened after the baptism, which we don't expect. Well, uh, none of us actually expected it. Usually, when you feel with power, we go into like, well, oh, there's many deliverance, healing, and stuff. But he went to the desert to be tempted by the devil. Now, there is a reason. Uh, I think there's a reason why. Okay, so um, if you get now, the Eve um, is tempted in three things. Yeah. Eve is tempted in, tempted in three things. Uh, the, the serpent went to Eve and says, uh, the tree, uh, you know, if you eat the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the fruit of it, you, you will be like God. And so Eve said three things about the tree, the, the fruit. It's uh, good for food, pleasant to the eyes, uh, uh, and desire to make one wise. Yeah? Good for food, pleasant to the eyes, and desire to make one wise. Desire to make one wise is literally pride. I can depend on my wisdom, you know, good for food, sight, uh, uh, loss of the flesh, loss of the eyes, and pride of life. Three things, right? And so when uh, the devil took Jesus, uh, uh, the devil kind of tempted Jesus. Now, he was tempted for 40 days, but there are three particular uh, temptations that uh, the Bible talks about. Uh, good for food, man. Right? If you're you're hungry, turn these stones into bread. Interesting, right? So uh, Eve says, "Well, it's all the food. It was good for food." Uh, uh, or the devil took him to the holy city, stand on the highest point. You see, bow down and worship me. You see all these kingdoms, all these kingdoms. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, 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 no, sorry. the first one is took him to the holy city, stand on the highest point. And if you're a son of God, cast yourself down and he will send his angels to charge over you. Uh, that is pride. Right? That is pride. That is ego. Right? The, yeah, you say you're the son of God. Prove it. Right? Uh, then the third one would be, uh, again, the, the devil took him uh, to a very high mountain to show him the kingdoms of the world and their splendors. Worship me and I'll give this to you. Last of the eyes. So interestingly, uh, you can see that uh, in similar patterns, right? What Eve couldn't do, or what, or what Adam female, uh, Adam, 
female have failed, uh, actually Jesus redeemed it in the wilderness. Very interesting, right? The anointing comes, then he went to the temptation. It's exactly the three things that Eve, in different forms, was struggling from, uh, or have failed, and Jesus redeemed it. Why? Why? Because, now, because you need to understand that Jesus is called the second Adam. Now, it all ties together. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 42, verse 49. Uh, it's, uh, uh, I won't be everything, but I'll read verse 44. It is sown in a natural body, it is raised in a spiritual body. It, if there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. Verse 45. So it is written, the first Adam is a life-giving being, and the last Adam is a life-giving spirit. Some translations in second Adam. So, what it means is Jesus is very often called the second Adam or the last Adam. Why? If you want to look at what Jesus come to do, uh, you just need to look at what the first Adam screw up. <laughs> yeah, What the first Adam mess up, the second Adam come and redeem. So it's very simple. If you want to see the kingdom of God on earth is, as it's in heaven, then you realize that Jesus is the second Adam. Right? That means he come to rectify, to restore what the first Adam has lost. That's why there's similarities there even in the temptation. Right? And so all we need to do, if you want to look at what li life is in the garden, look at what life is, is in the garden. Right? Look li at what life is in, uh, 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 on earth as it's in heaven. Right? King, the kingdom of God has no sickness. Therefore, Jesus healed the sick. The kingdom of God has no poverty. He calls out fishes. He, he, he can find coins even in fishes. He calmed the storm. Right? So it seems that, that you, you, you need to understand that uh, uh, this, now I'm not going to go to, into authority, but I'm just going to anointing because this is connected to authority. Also. But let's focus on the anointing. Then maybe next few weeks we'll talk about authority because it's very exciting. So, Whatever the first Adam mess up, the second Adam come and restore back. Yeah, that's why there's similarities. Now, uh, uh, it, then it talks about in Colossians chapter one verse twenty-seven. It says, "To to them God has chosen and make you known among the Gentiles." and the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now, so, so now there are a lot of times, I think 20 over times, that uh, Paul talks about mystery. In the Greek, it's called mysterion. Mystery, there's mystery. But in here, Paul is saying, I have to tell you the mystery. The mystery is, that is revealed, is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now, you need to understand that it's not Jesus in you, it's Christ in you. It means that the anointed one is in you. Yeah, the anointed one that is in you. That means, right, the mystery throughout the ages that has been revealed through Jesus, right, is the anointing is not living in some temple, or the anointing is not up in the heavens or in whatever altar, or, you know, whatever sacred space, but the anointing rests in you when you receive Jesus. That means you yourself has an anointing. That the anointing resides in you. Yeah, the anointing resides in you. Now, then we talk about the anointing that resides in you. So, okay, I realize that Christ is in me, but so if Christ is in me, I naturally, the, or the anointing is in me, that means I naturally take on the assignment of Jesus. Agree? So what is the assignment of Jesus? It's very simple. It's mentioned twice. One in Isaiah 61 verse 1. Uh, and the other time it's mentioned in Luke chapter 4 verse 18. It says that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me for He has anointed me to preach good news. Then proclaim the uh, good news to the poor, send me the Bible, broken hearted, proclaim freedom to the captives, release dark, uh, from darkness prisoners, uh, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the vengeance of our God, to comfort those who mourn, 
to provide those in Zion, uh, f- and to provide for those in Zion, to bestow them of crown of beauty instead of ashes, oil of joy for mourning, and a garment of praise instead of the spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, a display for of His splendor. Uh, they will rebuild ruin ancient uh, r- ancient ruins, restore the places along uh, lo- long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities and devastate that was devastated for generations. Strangers will be shepherd your flocks. Uh, foreigners will work in your fields and your vineyard. And so this is is very interesting. That and you will be called priests of the Lord, and you will be named ministers of our God. Isaiah sixty one six is still under the anointing. It's still under assignment. You will be named ministers of the Lord, our God. You will feed on the wealth of nations in their riches. You will boast, and instead of shame, you receive double portion. Instead of disgrace, you will be, you will rejoice in your inheritance. You will inherit a double portion of your land. Everlasting joy will be yours. Come on. Now, for I have the Lord love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. In my faithfulness, I reward my people, making an everlasting covenant with them. This is talking about a new covenant. This is talking about a covenant that you see that the Spirit of the Lord, the assignment of Jesus or, or the assignment of Christ is resting upon a group of people. And Jesus came to demonstrate that it's not... Jesus doesn't, didn't come and demonstrate how anointed he is. He also demonstrated how anointed you are because when you receive in him, Christ is in you, the hope of glory. If you can see how anointed Jesus is, you also need to see the reflection of Jesus and say, now it's your turn because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. After I go, greater things you shall do. The things I do, you will do, and greater things you shall do because I go to the Father. That means now, then finally, in call, uh, 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 in First John, First uh, uh, John b- chapter three verse eight, this is I'll read from the CEV because this is a better translation. Uh, anyone who keeps sinning belongs to the, uh, the devil. He is, because he sinned from the beginning. But for the Son of God came to destroy all that he has done. Your translation will say to destroy the works of the enemy or destroy the works of the devil. Uh, and, and But the uh, uh, CEB says to destroy, contemporary English version, to destroy the w- all that he has done. That means the anointing that is in you, right, is revealed to destroy every single work of the enemy, to unravel all the enemy has done for thousands of years back to the place where it is in the Garden of Eden where the God has perfect communication with man. To the place that what Eve had failed in those tem- three temptations, Jesus had fulfilled that you are not basing on the obedience of your own, you are basing on the performance and the obedience of Jesus. And when you receive him, he comes and del- you become the indwelling place of the Most High and therefore you become the anointed one. So, when you look at your life right now, when you look at your situation right now, when you look at what the enemy is doing in the world and in your life and in, at home, just remember, I, for this reason, the Son of God is manifested to destroy the works of of the enemy, but yet when Christ went to Jesus went to heaven, uh, uh, Jesus or uh, ascended to heaven, He also poured an anointing in Him that uh, in you, and you become an anointed one. So therefore, for this reason, the sons and daughters of God is manifested is to destroy all every single thing that the enemy has done in your life, where it be sickness, where it be poverty, depression, anxiety, fear, panic. Uh, poverty, whatever it is, what the enemy has, has stolen from you, this is what the anointing does. He, uh, the anointing, the assignment of the anointing is Isaiah 61 or Luke chapter 4. It's to unravel every single thing, every single drop of effort that the enemy has put over your life. And the anointing is the solution. Then you are an anointed one. The same anointing rests upon all of us. Whether we will do 
The question isn't about the resource. The question is about the mindset. The question has never been about the resource because all of us are given the same resources. The question is always about whether you want to live a victorious, whether you understand that you are Christ in you, Christ is in you, or you will learn or you will be subjected to the ways, the things of the world. You, you, uh, and if you don't understand the anointing that is in you, or everything around you have the ability to affect you. And the enemy is still trying the oldest trick that is in the book to, this, uh, to, to deceive if the same way he deceives us, you're weak, you're weak, you're no good, you're useless, that you're, you're just a nobody, you know what, you need to do more, uh, you need to be more because you're not accepted in Christ, but you need to understand, you are accepted in Jesus. And when you are accepted in Jesus, you are anointed, whether you believe it or not. My job tonight is to cause you to believe in what God has wired you to do, is to destroy every single thing that He has done over your life. And that's how important the anointing is. It's not just a feeling. This is biblically, uh, when I go through all these scriptures, is to tell you, you you're not just, the anointing is not just a feeling tonight. So when I'm teaching right now, in the last 20 minutes, I am telling you, this is what the Bible talks about the anointing. There is an assignment to it. The assignment is to destroy the works of the enemy. This is exciting. And some of us don't understand. And some of us don't understand the anointing that is in us. They don't understand Christ is in us. And when you understand Christ is in you, you, you know that you are sheep, but there's a lion of Judah that is in you. Yeah? Oh, all of us are like sheep. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, uh, but yet you need to understand that the lion of Judah is also in you. It is about time that we need to understand the authority that we have and need to understand the anointing that we have so that we can live victorious life. This victorious life is linked to the anointing and authority. And it, you can't have a victorious life without these two. And these are the resources God has given us. Unfortunately, uh, it, boils, it comes down to this place where we don't understand anointing. Sometimes we talk about anointing. is Oh, the person shakes hand, the Lord, wow, that's anointed. Oh, that's an anointed word. Well, what do you mean by anointed word? Or, uh, and, and sometimes we mistaken manifestation as anointing. Sometimes we mistaken different things. Like a person is shouting and he's shaking uh, his head when he prophesied. Oh, or she's shaking her head when she prophesied. Oh, that's an anointing. I tend to believe that. Well, just because a person is manifesting more when they give the word, doesn't make the word anointed. And sometimes it's annoying. And, you, and we need to understand that. There's a huge difference. And, uh, and to whatever they explain is the assignment of the anointing. Read Isaiah 61 and read it like a mandate. You read it and you realize what is lacking in my life. What is what is the enemy doing? Like, uh, uh, is he like uh, I have uh, I, I'm mourning, but look what joy is coming because why I have an anointing? The spirit of the Lord is to have anointed me to bring joy, to bring hope, to restore ancient ruins, to restore what the enemy has, has taken. That is the assignment, and very and that means now all of us manifest that assignment differently. You can be in media, and God has given you uh, the anointing for media. That's great. You know, it's uh, just like what Patrick says, you know, like he took over and bam, everybody cries, and, and people get healed, their hearts get straight, uh, they, like get, get right with the Lord and with uh, their families. And then, but I make everybody happy and laugh, and they get healed too physically most of the time. And that's great. I, each one of us manifests differently, but each one of us have an assignment that God wants us to take the anointing to destroy a, a part of what the enemy is doing over the world. All that he has done. If he is creating havoc in media, all these unrighteous teams, all these sensual teams, and if God has anointed you, to be a film director. You don't know why, but when you are praying, suddenly the anointing comes upon you and suddenly you start to write scripts and you know those scripts that as you write it, you know that, there's ability, that it has the ability to restore family values. And you know what? That is possibly 
what God has anointed you to do. Destroy everything that the enemy has done. You see, very often of times we look at anointing as in casting out demons, healing the sick. And that's part of it. And that's part of assignment for some people, some evangelists. But you know what? There are people who are anointed to create powerful anointed movies that they, as if, as they screen it in the secular realm. People get healed, people get touched, people, family get restored. That is powerful too. So therefore, stop trying to compare our anointing with each other because the only point of reference for anointing, especially for Pentecost and charismatic, is either people getting slain, people shaking, or people, uh, I don't know, like, like <laughs> over the place, rolling on the floor. And that's all right. That's manifestation. But that is not the assignment. You understand? <laughs> the assignment is this, Isaiah 61. I, I hope I'm really, really clear in this because this is huge. This has, if this can change the way you see the anointing, you are no longer coming to church to get somebody to pray for you. So, oh, I shake, that's the anointing is upon me. No, you are anointed. Your whole life is an anointing, my God. That's what it is. Christ in you, the anointing is in you. So that means your whole life is an anointing. That means. If I go to the market, I'm a, I have the anointing. If I go to the movies, I have an anointing. If I talk to someone in the streets, I have an anointing. Everywhere you go, you have an anointing. But whether you want to tap into it to use that anointing, that's the main question. Because according to your portfolio in Isaiah 61, that, there is a whole lot of things that is happening right now. Depression, fear, anxiety, panic. Ruin cities in ruins because of poverty, or cities in ruins because of hunger, cities in ruins because of viruses or whatever it is. But that is to repair ancient ruins. Anything that has been ruined for a long time, you know what? That anointing is there to do it. It doesn't matter how old that bondage is, because one touch from the anointing, everything can be changed. You can be called to write novels, anointed novels, that when people read it, they get their life right with the Lord. Or they, they somehow understood that this is God of the wonders that is, that is seeking them out. Why not? I mean, it, it has to be more than the shack, right? I mean, there's quite a number of anointed movies that come out that really de- kind of like touches the hearts of people. Whether you agree with it theologically or not, I don't really care. But, y- you know, The Shack is one of those movies that you know that, <laughs> wow, uh, there is an anointing in that. But could it be just, un- uh, could it be more? You don't feel an only anointed on Monday. Oh, sorry, Sunday. <laughs> if you feel anointed on Monday, that's correct. But you don't only feel anointed on Sunday or only in worship. Your whole life is an anointing because Christ, the anointed one in you, is the hope of glory. I do really hope you understand that because this is huge. This is a big team separating between self-defeating, powerless Christianity and powerful Christians who understand their identity. And uh, I, I do hope you, we, we ourselves, sometimes we take the anointing and we, ca- we kind of label it as an event or a revival meeting where we feel good for one, two hours. That's great. But it's 24 hours. And when you understand that, your whole life is revival. Uh, and so, uh, but <laughs> okay, I think I shared too much with you. Uh, I will pass it on to... Pastor Clement. <laughs> All right. Wow. I mean, that that's a lot of stuff. I really love uh, Pastor Patrick's story. You know, I, I can totally relate. Like, I also went to a Benny Hinn's meeting, and I tell that was the longest church service I've ever been to. I remember it was like almost like four hours, and lots of singing, but man, it, it was really powerful. It was a really powerful service. And and I... I my friend was telling me this service is gonna be long. Make sure you 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 go to the restroom, <laughs> you know, uh, and make sure that you don't go to the restroom when he's ministering. <laughs> so <laughs> make make sure you don't get slain in the restroom. No, make sure you don't leave and then the door close and you cannot come in. 
Yeah, it. yeah, they close the door. They they close the door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that that that's kind of what I heard. You know, when when yeah. when when the spirit's moving and then um, sometimes the door closed. So if you go out to use a restroom or pick up a phone call, you might <laughs> you might literally miss the anointing. <laughs> you get rapture <laughs> like oh man, yeah. left behind. But I I I want to continue kind of uh where Jeff left off because uh, I I. I, I love what Jeff's talking about, knowing your identity, because I, I want to introduce a new word. It's like, like, we need to understand our new nature. We need to understand our new nature. You see, if you recognize that you are already blessed, then you're no longer looking for blessing. If you know that your new nature, your new identity is anointed, you're not going to chase an anointing because you already have it. And I feel that, you know, it is really important that God always give you something to complete your assignment. God will never call you to do something without equipping or giving you the means or the, the power source. God always called us to victory, not to failure, which means He will not give us an assignment or things to do without giving us the necessary either provision or, or equipment in order to achieve it. You know, having said that, you know, I, I think it's really important that, you know, I love what Jeff talking about, not comparing anointing, you know, but I, 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 I think the, the foundation is to first recognize that you already got it. You already got it. You know, I'm going to read a few scriptures and, and then uh, teach and explain from there. All right, I'm going to start from Acts 10.38. All right, Acts 10.38. It said this, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit. Wow, okay. And with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. All right. So, okay, let's, let's really look at this. All right. God anointed Jesus. All right. Not, not just with any power, but with Holy Spirit and, and with power. He was anointed with the Holy Spirit. And, and we all know the story. Jesus did not begin his ministry until he was baptized by John. And when he came up, the Holy Spirit came in the shape or form like a dove and rest on him. Jesus is showing an example for us to follow. You see, if Jesus started healing the sick, preaching the gospel when he was, he was like really young, performing miracles at a really young age, then we are start to have an excuse and say that we are not like Jesus. We are not born this way. We are not born this way. Jesus was born out of Mary as a virgin. We do not have this supernatural birth. We do not have what Jesus has as a child because we are not born the same way. And we give excuses why we cannot do the works of Jesus. But Jesus only started His ministry when He was baptized and when he came out with the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's a concept. You might not be born in the way like, you know, Jesus, which is the, the, the birth through a Virgin Mary. All right. But we need to know we are born again. We are born again. The moment we are born again, we receive the Holy Spirit. We are replaying the scenario of when Jesus came out of the water, the, the Holy Spirit came upon him like a dove. The moment we are born again, we are reenacting, we are walking through that whole scene again right now that we, born again, the Holy Spirit come and rest upon us. Let's look at 1 John 2.20. 1 John 2.20, it says this, But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. You have. You have something ready. You have something already. When we don't recognize what we have, we start to chase something that we already have. We start to work and perform for something that we already have, not knowing that we already have the anointing. We already have the Holy Spirit. All right, let's, let's look at 1 John 2 again. Let's go to verse, 1 John 2, verse 27. All right. It says this, But the anointing which you have received from Him, talking about the Holy Spirit, abides in you and you do not need that anyone teach you but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things all right you you got a holy spirit you got an anointing and the anointing will teach you and the anointing will teach you 
all things. All right, remember, the anointing will teach you all things. All right, I'm going to jump to another verse. All right, John 14, verse 26. And it said this, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father was sent in my name, he will teach you all things. And bring to remembrance all things I say to you. We, 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 we need to know, in First John 2, the anointing is referring to as the Holy Spirit. As a spirit that will teach you all things, the same spirit talk about John 14, the same spirit talk about in Acts, that when the, when the Holy Spirit come upon you, you shall receive power. And that's what, in, that's what Jesus had. He was anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power. Wow. We, we, we really need to understand what the Word is saying. We need, really need to understand what the Word tells us what we can do. And the word anointed, it, its meaning is like being smeared or rubbed with oil. It means you're anointed with the oil of heaven. You're anointed with the oil of the Holy Spirit. You're more powerful than you think you are. I want to give a, a, a different analogy of, of the point I, I'm trying to uh, bring across. Uh, I think uh, most of you will, will probably uh, know, know this comic called the X-Men. Right? X-Men are basically uh, people who, uh, who are called uh, mutant and they have like superpower. You know, some can teleport, some have superhuman strength, you know, uh, and some has uh, telekinesis can read minds, etc. All right. So, so, so X Men, they are the X Men, right? And and what interesting about Newton is they they have superpower because they have something called the X gene. All right. So basically, they have something inside their body that change their nature, and they can do something new. I like to propose this is this is similar to us being a new creation in Christ. When we receive, you know, uh, Jesus, we, we didn't have the X gene, we had the J gene, Jesus gene. And, and, and because we have the Holy Spirit, it, it, it changes our nature. The Bible says that we are partakers of the divine nature. You know, when we start to understand, like, my nature is anointed, that anointing will, will always be with me. Because the Bible says the anointing abides in me. Abides means that it's in me, will never leave me, will never forsake me. The only time you don't feel anointed is when the Holy Spirit leaves you, <laughs> which is not biblical. So the problem is a lot of times we put anointing as something about feeling instead of something what the, what the Lord promised you. Whether I feel anointed or not, I'm still going to heal the sick. Whether I feel anointed or not, I'm still going to prophesy. Whether I feel anointed or not, I'm still going to preach the gospel. We, 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 we put this anointing thing and, 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 and kind of like, you know, uh, make it like it, it comes and go. In, a, in, in the sense of like, because of my feeling, oh, brother, I don't feel the electricity right now. So I don't feel the anointing is flowing. So I, I, I'm not going to pray for the sick. Oh, brother, I, I just don't feel the... The, the, the presence on top of me, I don't think I can prophesy. <laughs> we, 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 we start to put the anointing that we move in into like certain criteria on condition more than like, hey, I already carry it. I already carry it. I, I am not controlling it. I'm not waiting for certain circumstances. I'm flowing with it. And I think that that's something I, maybe I would like to talk more over the week is flowing in the anointing. I'm not trying to control it. I'm not trying to restrict it. You know, the Bible says like, you know, do, do not quench the Holy Spirit. It means we don't restrict the flow of the Holy Spirit. I, I'm not leading the Spirit. In, instead, the Spirit is leading me. We are co-partners. There's a friendship with the anointing. You know, I don't take a step ahead of the anointing. The anointing leads me to take that first step. You know, and, and, and I feel that the one, one a really good verse, uh, I was reading it just now, uh, is in 1 Samuel chapter 5. You know, it's talking about the Ark of the Covenant and, and the either they gone. Right? The, the Ark was stolen and brought before the 
either of the house of Dagon and set it by Dagon. You see, the ark in itself is already anointed. And when the anointed ark shows up, the power shows up. Right, we, the, the, the first day the Dagon fell down, the next day it, it fell down again. I think that the, the head and the hand were like severed from, from the idol. You see, the ark didn't have to wait for a certain scenario to fulfill. It, 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 the anointing just showed because the ark was anointed. And I think this is something that we, we need to understand that wherever we go, the anointing follows us. The anointing is within me. Wherever I show up, that's where the anointing is going to show up. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not like, you know, like, oh, today I go to this place, the anointing never follow me. No, no, no. Wherever I show up, God shows up. You know, I, 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 I shared this before, you know, in, in the old, in the old uh, covenant, right? Wherever the art of, of the covenant shows up, the, the Israelite wins the battle. But in a new cover, whenever we show up, God shows up. We are that new host. We are that new temple of the Holy Spirit. We are that anointed sons and daughter. See, when you are born again, you are already anointed. God didn't make you born again to chase after something that you have to earn it. God already anointed you. The responsibility for us is actually to discover how to flow in the anointing. And, and that's pretty much most of the X-Men, right? They, they are learning how to control their powers. They're discovering their superpowers and they're learning how to control. And, and, and that, 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 that's my personal journey too, you know, that I'm already anointed. I am going on this journey to discover how my anointing moves, how my anointing works and how I can flow with it. You know, I love how, how, what, what Jeff was talking about just earlier on about even making anointed film. Because we all, we're all anointed. We're all anointed. And I love the story of Joseph. He said that whatever the hands of Joseph touches, God prospered it. And I like to uh, use that uh, scriptures and say whatever our anointed hand touches, the thing become anointed. If it's a movie you are going to make, it's going to be an anointed movie. If it's a cupcake you are going to bake, it's going to be an anointed cupcake. If it's a dance that you're going to dance, it's going to be an anointed dance. And maybe even it's a joke, it's going to be an anointed joke. People can hear your joke, they laugh, and suddenly get healed. Because it carries the substance of heaven, it carries that anointing. You know? So I, I really feel it's important that that when, when we are we're not looking for something we don't have but we're discovering what we have and growing it cultivating it all right because I feel that what, what, one of the things that uh, I, I've seen while traveling you know doing itinerant is I feel that when people forget that they are already anointed they are actually literally chasing after something that they already have so they spend more time go looking on the website looking for the next big conference speaker, etc., to get an anointing, rather than spending most of the time going out into their metron, going out their sphere of influence and, and releasing the anointing. I, I feel that you, 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 you achieve so much more, you will understand so much more of the anointing when you are out there in the fields, maybe in the mission, maybe in a corporate, in the business, in the engineering, etc. When you are out there and you're like asking God, what can I release my anointing onto? And when you just go on this journey to discover, you know. So I just want to encourage everyone and 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 say that you are already anointed. You are already anointed. You lack nothing. You are a son. You're a daughter, and your father in heaven loves you so much and already give you that anointing that abides in you. You're not an orphan looking for an anointing. You are a son and a daughter established in his love, in his grace, growing the anointing that's already within you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Awesome. I love how you used uh, all those 
wonderful scriptures that I'm about to use before you start preaching. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, 1 Corinthians ch chapter 2, verse 9. Uh, but it is written, I has not seen, nor ye heard, nor entered the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of of God. For what man knows, the things of a man accept the spirit of a man which is in him. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, for they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So, uh, just now, Clement, you, you talk a, a lot about how, uh, like, First John chapter 2, verse 20 and 27, how, how we have an anointing from God and the anointing teaches us all things, right? And how uh, in the Gospel of John chapter fourteen that uh, that Jesus says, "I'm sent," you know, the, the the Father is sending you the Helper, the Paracletos, you know, which is ho the Holy Spirit, and He will teach you all things, right? And 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 so, what is the anointing? The anointing is the Holy Spirit. Yeah, because it says in John chapter ten verse eight, uh, thirty-eight. Uh, for God anointed Jesus with, with what? With the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Spirit and power. Yeah. So God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and power and God anoints us with what? With Holy Spirit. And, 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 and so while the, uh, the anointing made, uh, Many times, instinctively, as charismatics and Pentecostal, when we think of, of Holy Spirit, uh, we think of anointing, or we just think of, oh, that's power, that's supernatural power, rightfully so. But, but more importantly, it, the anointing is it, 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 it's not just pure impersonal power, it's not just f the force of the universe somewhere out there, but it... <laughs> It has a personality, and it is a person. It's the Holy Spirit. It's the power. Uh, is the is the power of Christ? Is is the power of the Holy Spirit? It is, is the Holy Spirit who is the anointing, and is the Holy Spirit wh whom we are anointed with. That we are we are not anointed with just uh, an impersonal power, like electric. Like it's we we it's not just like we are just charged by electricity and 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 this electricity has no mind of its own you know it's, it's it's just impersonal it's just energy but no this anointing has personality it has a mind it can think it can feel it can commune and communicate with us it has a will the anointing of god is the Holy Spirit. The anointing of God is... is, uh, is, is we are not just talking about an impersonal power, dumb power, raw power, but it, 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 it is the, the Holy Spirit is the power of God with a will and a personality who feels, who knows, who understands. And... 
And that's why, and, and that's, that's why when Benny Hinn first started out and when he wrote the book, Good Morning Holy Spirit, it's all about this relationship, wonderful relationship with, with the Spirit of God. The, every morning he wakes up, uh, he begins by saying, Good morning, Holy Spirit. It's so good to wake up to you today. Good morning, Holy Spirit. It's so good to be with you today. I'm so excited to spend the whole day with you today. That the anointing is not an impersonal power that we, we exploit, harness, and use. And then chuck aside when we don't need it. This is... The anointing. <laughs> it's meant to be your closest friend. That the way, <sighs> really, Benny Hinn learned it from Catherine Coleman. That there is really no one that describes the Holy Spirit like Catherine Coleman. Nope. I mean, if you watch his videos, yes, she can sound a bit weird. <laughs> And very, y if you think I'm very te te what is what's the word dramatic and te te uh, theatrical, okay, you've seen nothing, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she's yeah, flamboyant. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. She's flamboyant. Like, she's re really, it's really like oh, I can't, I can't. Ooh. The Holy Spirit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I just love the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the way Catherine Kuhlman describes Holy Spirit, there's such depth of intimacy. There's such depth of relationship you can feel it with your heart mm. and so to Catherine Kuhlman the anointing is not just a, 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 a power a force that she uses and exploits and manipulates if it's just a force that, that we use and harness and manipulate that is not anointing that is magic Oh, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, and so this it is not, it is not about gathering power, it's not about growing power, it, it is about relationship. And anointing with the Holy Spirit. It's about connection that as you connect with the Holy Spirit, with His heart, with His life, that His life, His love, His light, flows through you. His grace, His goodness, His glory flows through you and you become that conduit. That conduit of His life, love and life. That conduit of His grace, His goodness, His gl glory. And it flows through you. That that you and I become instruments and vessels. And so really the old school Pentecostal, one of the big words they use is about yielding to the Holy Spirit. 
that as, as I yield to the Holy Spirit, he flows through me. But if I'm, I'm so... I, 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 I'm so insistent on I want, I want to do this. I want to do th- this, this w- things this way. Then there is no, there is no partnership because in a relationship that there, there is this giving and receiving that is accommodating. In any relationship, in any partnership, in a marriage, in a uh, that is that is a that is a giving in to each other for death for life to flow. And 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 so To move in the power of the Holy Spirit is, 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 is really about yielding to the Spirit of God. That's really the old school Pentecostal phrase, you know. <laughs> mm. Yeah? Yep. We, we really don't use that phrase anymore. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, I've not heard that for long, such a long, long time. time. Yeah? Maybe AG, but the old school age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, the problem is a lot of times when you, you hear people talk about, uh, when use this phrase is used in such a very law-based way. Yeah. Yeah, very legalistic way. And, and, oh, you need to die to yourself. You need to, you know, you need to just cut off all your personality and become like a zombie so get God can zap you and use you and you just do what he wants you to do. <laughs> no, it's not like that. But it's like a relation, like a marriage. You give in to each other, right? You know what you know what your partner likes. You know what your partner uh, is like. You know what mm. your pa- partner's heart is. You, uh, his or her des- desire, and you give in. You accommodate because you love your partner, your life partner, and the Holy Spirit is your life partner. You give in to the one. You love. Because he or she matters to you, you want to delight him or her, you want to please him or her. And, and so as, as, as you give, you receive. As you give, you receive. As you give, you receive. That's how a love relationship works. But as I hold back, the other person gets hurt. As I hold back, the other person starts holding back too. As 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 I refuse to budge and and I I I refuse to yield, the person will start to back off. And so again, many of the old school uh, Pentecostals, like Benny Hinn, or Captain Kuhnman would say, the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He won't force you to do what you don't want to do. When you do not yield, the Holy Spirit backs off. It's called the quenching of the Spirit. It's quenching the Holy Spirit. Ephesians uh, chapter 5 talks about the quenching the Holy Spirit. And you know what? As as a minister, you know, uh, I find that there are seasons of my life where I, I need to repent because I begin to treat the anointing as just raw power instead of a person. And because it's so easy, and, and it has happened to everyone, including, uh, better not name other names, <laughs> right? 
<laughs> but <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's with big names who 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 teach about the Holy Spirit and moving in power and yielding the Holy Spirit. It's so easy to slip into that that uh, mode where, oh, n- no, everything in is autopilot. I just flow in the anointing. Everything will work as clockwork. Yeah. Like Samson, you know, like everything was clockwork f- for him and he, he started to to live a life of uh, licentiousness and sin, but he was still moving in God's power and strength because he started to take the anointing for granted. And he started to take his calling, his holy calling as a a Nazarite for for granted. Nazarite, right? Yeah. Yeah. Nazarite is holy calling of Mm. abstinence. But in, even in the recent week, I, I was so um, inspired by a certain prophet. You know, he, I, I I've been listening to his YouTube videos, and he he's, he started to he he shared about. I, first of all, I was very impacted by him because he he has been really very accurate. You know, and and how he hears uh, God's voice, and and he shared about how. Uh, how he cultivate his 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 prayer life just started thing by praying in tongues for half an hour then an hour then waking up early in the morning and praying for a few hours and and that really inspired me and and that really um that that really uh kind of reminded me that hey i i need to start doing that as well Like I used to, I I I I used I I used to be a lot more intentional. But you know, ministry have just taken over. And just I've been just so busy ministering to people, and and when you minister to people, yes, you do move in the anointing. God just God. God does crashes in because there's there's uh, there's an anointing upon and the anointing around that there's a corporate anointing and there's anointing there's a grace that flows uh, when when you minister. But <laughs> when I, I I begin to hear this prophet share about 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 how he cultivates his 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 personal uh, l- spiritual life. I, I began to remember. Oh yes, I need to deepen myself in the Holy Spirit to build my faith in the Holy Ghost. I need to begin to pray in tongues more intentionally. I need to begin to connect more intentionally. Not just when 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 it's ministry time, but in my in in my personal time, where I need to I need to build deeper roots. An anointing is not just a power we exploit and manipulate and harness. The anointing is a person. And the Holy Spirit is my life partner. A life partner that I need to learn to give in, to accommodate, to love. A life partner that I share life with, that I share my heart with. A life partner that I feel for, that, that just as I know that he feels my heart, that I must feel his heart. And when I allow myself to know his heart, that is allowing the Spirit of God to search my heart, to search 
my heart and to allow me to be known by him and, and to allow him to be known by me. And that's how I began to, to, to connect with the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ in me, but I need to connect to that mind, to know his heart, his will, what he thinks, what he feels. First about me, then about my situation, then about my world. To begin to discern spiritual things with spiritual. That is, the anointing is all about journeying with the paracletos. Paracletos, the one who, it means the one who walks beside you. To, to journeying with the paracletos is all about walking with the one who walks with you. Thank you, Lord. Mm. All right, I'll take on the paracleto since Patrick uh, <laughs> kind of left off with that. Uh, one of the names of the Holy Spirit or the Comforter is called Pavacletos or Pavacles. Uh, it's also uh, another word for it. The meaning of it is advocate. means like a lawyer who kind of fight your case. And but technically, the, the word para means alongside. Uh, uh, so Pavacles is the, the meaning in Greek for the Holy Spirit. Uh, for that, that, was, uh, that word is to walk alongside. It means he's beside you. Uh, yet at the same time, you need to understand one of the nature of the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, in John chapter 16, verse 8, is he comes to prove the world of, of about sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Uh, and sin because the world do not believe, righteousness because I are uh, going to the Father. Now, uh, we can safe to say that the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of righteousness. Now, why does uh, it is essential to you to understand that now when you talk about the Holy Spirit, it's practically He who walks alongside. It means He's beside you. Uh, now, why, why, and, uh, now, why does it say that uh, Okay, let me go to Romans chapter 14, verse 17. The kingdom of God is not a matter of eating or drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So three things are righteousness, peace, and joy. Now, uh, and then you have the word righteousness in the Holy Spirit. So peace in the Holy Spirit, joy in the Holy Spirit, righteousness in the Holy Spirit. So in the Holy Spirit, there's this package of all these things. And one of them is righteousness. Uh, now, why? Why does... Um, why... Thus, the Psalms 40, uh, 24, verse 16 says, Though the righteous may stumble seven times, they will rise again, but the wicked stumble when calamity strikes. So righteous people doesn't mean that your uh, The righteous will, f like if you look at this verse, right, the righteous may fall seven times. It means... Seven is the number of perfection. You may be totally devastated and you may fail, right? But yet at the same time, it, it says they, they, they'll rise again. Why? In, in uh, I think it's fulfilled in the Holy Spirit because one of the names of the Holy Spirit is Paraclete. It means to walk alongside. It actually means that the Spirit that keeps you upright. That means if you come fall and come fall left or right because he's Paraclete, he's the one that's walking alongside with you is a spirit that causes you to walk upright. Now, I don't know about you, when you understand the kingdom of God is not mere drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, that means, right, the spirit is there to cause us to walk upright. And some of us have this very terrible idea to think that even walking uprightly or keeping yourself holy is based on your effort. It's not. It's actually by the power of the Holy Spirit. There's a reason why he called Pericles, because if someone is standing to your left and your right, it's impossible to fall left 
and right. So therefore, He is a spirit that, that stands beside you to cause you to walk outrightly. That actually puts holiness into rest. They say, oh man, it's really not my effort to make myself holy, but I am going to, in every area that you have, that you are struggling, well, you have tried it, but you have never connected to the spirit that can cause you to walk upright. Uh, that, that is a huge game changer. You need to understand righteousness is really of the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and I... I f- and I feel like uh, when you're allowed, and, and what Patrick is saying is this, it's like we lost that word uh, in olden times. Uh, I, I don't know whether some of you who are older, you will know that there's this thing called the tearing meetings, Ta- right? Meetings that wait, right? Ma- tearing meetings. So it means that people just wait upon the Holy Spirit. And that's why in Sokobiti, we love to soak. We love, uh, I mean, we change it in our world. It's actually just waiting on the Lord. And that's actually what's happening tomorrow. And we still have slots. We still have about 10 slots, I think. And, and, and it's three hours of just waiting on the Lord in His presence and worship. So if we can make it tomorrow, try to make it tomorrow. And we lost that. We, we lost that. And, and what Patrick says say is this, that we lost the word tarrying. Uh, or you don't know what tearing is, it's not a person called Terry, but <laughs> waiting on the Lord. Just waiting, doing nothing, waiting on the Lord, or yield to the Spirit. It says, oh Lord, I surrender. I want to be led by you. We lost those things because we are so used tonight now, like going on YouTube, getting a message now. Everything had to be instant. Three, five, song, five songs, a message, three point sermon now. I want my worship now. I want my sermon now. Everything has to be now. And we lose the essence of actually, uh, what do you call that word? In awe. What do you call that word? Uh, uh, reverence of the Holy Spirit that, you know what? We lost this presence. You know, when the Holy Spirit or the anointing comes on the early church, they were waiting. But in this society, we lose that 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 value that 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 what it means to wait on the Lord and allow Him to fill you. What it means to be yielded to the Holy Spirit. And sometimes some, now we don't like those, that word because nobody likes to something. Nobody likes to yield. And we want to do our own thing. We want our microwave Christianity. We want our microwave program. What about the good old days when we start to just yield and wait on the Lord? I mean, we are not in a hurry to worship, right? I mean, if the worship goes one, two hours, three hours, fine. You're going to worship in eternity. If you don't like worship now, heaven is not a good place for you. Try the other place. That one quite hot. Never mind. Go heaven better. So you better learn to enjoy it, right? I mean, so and and we, and we lose that touch, and that's why we want the Holy Spirit to show up, but we want Him to show up on song number four, or we want to show Him to show up immediately after the message during the other call. That's the right time to show up. So right now, Holy Spirit, you show. Up. See, that is not yielding to the Holy Spirit, and that's not allowing space for the Holy Spirit to move. And and we lose those things. Especially if you are a church that have multiple service, <laughs> you have to clear the service before the next service comes. And yeah, I totally understand. I used to work in a church that has multiple service. And it's very hard. It's really, really very hard. That's why we need to create atmospheres or have a time that we come to seek the Lord together and allow it. So Lord, we yield to you. Lord, we surrender to you. Let your presence come. Let your anointing come in Jesus' name. And, and it's hard. It's hard. But but you know what? The good thing about COVID is now we've got a lot of time on our hands. But yet we still don't have people who want to say, Lord, I surrender. Come on, do whatever you want. Uh, I, I think, I, I think we, we need to come back to that place of waiting on the Lord. And, and you know what? Tomorrow it's going to be streaming live. Join us. Uh, let's wait on the Lord together and see what He's about to do. We might not have the perfect band, we might not sing perfectly, but yet we have the right heart. It's a heart of worship before the art of worship. We are not, might not be perfect in the art, but when we have the heart of worship, it attracts the presence and the power and the anointing of God. You can have the most perfect worship, pitch perfect, but there's no anointing. I'd rather have a tone that person playing a piano that is out of tune and has no anointing 
that versus a person who is playing perfectly, singing in tune, and has no power and presence. And, uh, and, and, but you know what? That's how we see Christianity. And we disguise excellence as perfectionists. Everything excellence, everything has to be perfect. God has to put it in the box. God has to put me in my box. The Holy Spirit has to fit in this time. No, that's not how God works. And that's why in so we want the presence of God. We want the anointing of God. <laughs> it's like an advertisement for tomorrow, right? Oh, I just announced tomorrow. Praise the Lord. And it's 2 to 5, Singapore time. So tune in. If you can't come, there's still 10 space, but if you can't come, it, uh, the link will be provided later. But uh, you, if, you, if you can't come, just tune in. Let's wait on the Lord together and see what happens. We need to come back to this simplicity where we give Him time. You know, so, uh, yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Jeff, I, I love uh, the point about, you know, because I have the same sentiments. It, it, I, I feel that, you know, in our charismatic world, we want everything fast. You know, we, we want everything instantaneously, and we lose the art of waiting for the Holy Spirit. And it, this is the same case in, in the book of Acts. You know, when Jesus first showed up, uh, he showed up to about 500 disciples and he told them like, hey, go go wait in Jerusalem. You know, do not go until you receive the promise of the Father, which is the Holy Spirit. You know, but so so we have about 500 disciples receiving that instruction and information. But what we read in Acts is only 120 disciples were left. All right, so 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 there's 380 disciples. We, we we don't know who they are. We don't know where they go. We don't know what happened to them. They definitely didn't get ruptured. <laughs> All right, <laughs> and 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 the thing is this: if you do the math, 380 is is gone. 120 left. All right, the 120 waited. And what one one of the interesting and beautiful thing is this: when Jesus say wait for the promise of the Father, which is the Holy Spirit, He did not give a time. He did not give a specific date. He just said, wait. Wait. And you see, the, 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 the thing is, is the, 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 the hungry one, the patient one, the one that say, that say that, you know, if Jesus say this, I am going to wait. I'm just going to, you know, hit his instruction. So the 120 waited and when Pentecost come, they were all filled with the Spirit. So basically, the 380 means that we don't know where they go. Maybe they started to talk about Jesus without the power of the Holy Spirit. Maybe they started to plant churches without the power of the Holy Spirit. Or we, we don't know what, what happened to them. But I feel like this is a very um, good, sobering truth and story to wake us up. That let, let, let's, let us not lose that reverence. Let us not lose that patience. Because a lot of times, right, like, like, when I, when I was in America, there's actually a church called, I think, like, like the 60 minute church or something like that. Like, literally, you go in and out of the church service in 60 minutes. What? 60 minutes? Yeah, one hour. Like, worship, everything minutes. is time. There is that whole uh, timeline, you know, or timetable. You know, what time start, play this, who take over. Everything is to the minutes. You know, and you people. Mean, you mean the name of the church is sixty minutes? Something like I can't remember. Yeah, but literally, they do, they do a whole church service like in, within sixty minutes. Wow! People get in and out of church sixty minutes. You know, you need to know the Holy Spirit cannot be confined to a timetable. The Holy Spirit cannot be pressured into our own personal agenda. The Holy Spirit is a partner. The Holy Spirit is our friend. Can you imagine? You 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 invite your friend and say, okay, five p.m. you come here, then six p.m. on the dot we leave. Whether the food come or not, that's the matter we're going to leave. Uh, that, that's that's not going to be a really fun hangout. How would you feel as a friend when you're always hang out with someone, but it's always the person's agenda? Or watching the clock. Or watching the clock, correct. It's like, wow, waiting for the time to hit. Wow, I can't wait to leave. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you see, if we lose the heart and the art of waiting for the Lord, it becomes like that. I can't wait to leave this meeting. 
So Holy Spirit, can you come right now and zap me, feel me, and do whatever I want, make me feel happy, make me feel comfortable, make me feel shook, you know? That we detect what has to happen at a certain time, at a certain meeting, based on our own preference and agenda, and not what heaven has. Remember, the Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is our friend, and He wants a relationship not to be dictator. Mm -hmm. We are not supposed to be a dictator of the Spirit. We are supposed to be friends with the Spirit. Yep. Anytime you try to dictate the Spirit, you are quenching the Spirit. It's like this. If someone, you know, uh, fly kites on you three times, all right, for uh, like another way, if play someone... You Play you, you out, play you out. Play you out. You know, three times. You probably won't show on a fourth time. <laughs> right? Can it, so, for, so for example, I use Pastor Patrick because Pastor Patrick is one of my good friends, right? He, he wouldn't mind me <laughs> mentioning play this. Play on the lobster. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say about that, but, but I was going to say that. Like, hope defer me the heart sick. <laughs> you know? I'm so sick that I don't want to see lobster anymore. <laughs> you know, if, if Pastor Patrick asked me out for dinner, and I said, okay, let's meet 7 p.m. Okay, tell me where's the venue. And he didn't show up. He played me out. And I was like, okay, never, never mind. Maybe something happened to him. I'll pray for him. <laughs> and uh, next week, happened again. Say, oh, you know, let's, let's meet the game. Sorry, you know. And then I was like, okay, you know, same 7 p.m., same time, you know, same place. I show up. He played me out again. Okay, maybe, you know, I, I have grace. You know, I'm like, wow, I love this brother so much. I will show up for the third time. You know? And he'll still play me on the third time. Well, I need to pray for his salvation. Wow, I tell you, if I still show up on the fourth time, I'm a fool, man. <laughs> you know? So, 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 so that, that's kind, kind of thing, you know? It, it's not about my own agenda, but rather, you know? Like when, you know, uh, I remember like the, the last time, you know, Patrick and I, we went out to eat. He, he said, okay, where should we eat? What, what do you want to eat? Like, you know, we discuss, you know? We discuss what do we want to eat. You know, it's a, it's, it's a friendship. There are both party involved in a discussion, but unfortunately, he never discussed about lobster. He <laughs> <laughs> discussed about other menu. <laughs> Cheaper menu. <laughs> but hey, it was a really good meal with, with 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 Patrick. It was a very nice view, very good lunch with him, nonetheless. <laughs> even though there wasn't any seafood, but never mind. I'm sure he will have lots of seafood. You know, since since his uh, birthday is is coming soon, you know, maybe he will have lots of seafood. <laughs> No, but we will see a lot of food. <laughs> ah, wow, that was so. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so, <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, you know, I, I think if I feel that that's one thing that we can really take home tonight, it's really to see the Holy Spirit as not just the anointing, not just as the power, not just as something to use, but rather as a person that we can fellowship with, we can hang out with, we can have a friendship, we can get to know each other, we can be a partner in the kingdom of God. I feel that that in itself will shift a lot of things. You know, and, and I love, you know, um, Patrick talked about the book, you know, Good Morning Holy Spirit. That That's like one of the classic. Yep. One of like Christian, I won't say Christian literature, but our Christian books are already one of really the really classic books in a charismatic world. Mm. Yeah. Pentecostal classic. Pe Pen yeah, Pentecostal yeah. classic. Ah, Pentecostal that's a, classic. yeah, yeah, not literature. Yeah, yeah, that's a better word. Pentecostal classic. And I do really highly recommend it. I, I read that book, you know, and, and I love how in that book, you know, Benny talks about how he sees the Holy Spirit as a person and how in the morning he'll wake up, he will start to talk to the Holy Spirit. You know, and that's something really I practice in my life. I, I kid you not, you know, like literally every time I wake up, the first thing I do is I really start, you know, good morning, Holy Spirit, you know, just awaking to the consciousness that He's in me and He's real. You know, but of course I haven't get to Benny stage whereby <laughs> eight hours lost in the glory. You mm -hmm. know, but but that is something that we all should be hungry for. Right. You know, but we all have to start somewhere. You know, if you can, if you don't even enjoy soccerability, three hours worship, don't talk about eight hours. Yeah. You know, if you feel that like our Sunday service, that one hour plus worship is really very long, let's not talk about our eight hours. Yep. We're going to start somewhere. Yep. It's a journey, you know, and, and you know, uh, and I feel that it's really important that w w we, we just start that five minutes, that five minutes 
give that five minutes every day to the Lord. Pray in tongues, you know, read the Bible, just really, really spending time with the Lord, that five minutes, and just really receiving, encountering His presence. And I feel that some, there's so much powerful things can happen when we just give that five minutes. Yep. Because I think we're so much in a rush. And and I just want to encourage, encourage people, consistency is better than quantity. I would rather, you know, like spend every day consistently, spend every day, consistently every day, spend time with the Lord, then one day spend time, then I spend one hour, then the next day like never spend time. I feel that something about consistency that's really powerful here. It's not about the quantity. The Lord, I'll put this way, the Lord knows how busy we are. We don't need to tell Him. Right. So the, the, the Lord demands from maybe a mom taking care of three kids compared to someone who has, who, who has a different occupation or profession or maybe someone who is in full-time ministry. The Lord requires a you know, different amount of time in the glory. You know, so 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 I feel that when we read people who spend hours with the Lord, I feel that one of the things that we need to know is that we don't feel condemned. Because I feel that one of the problems, you know, like Jeff talked about yes, is comparison. It's not just comparing anointing, but we compare the time we spend with the Lord. We compare how we spend with the Lord. It's like, wow, you spend time, God, gold dust appeared. I spend time, nothing happened. Wow, you spend time, then God got feathers, got vision, my one don't have. Mm. You know? You spend time not for your sake, you spend time for the relationship. Right. And I feel that if you start to spend time for your sake, you will start to look for all this agenda or gemstones or whatever manifestation. But if you spend time for the relationship sake, you're not looking for all this checkbox, you know, like, wow, this is a very powerful time with a lot today. Got so, so that things happen. I saw a vision of Patrick. Wow. And then I give a word to Patrick and Patrick was so encouraged by the word. You know, it's not mm. like a chat box of things that should happen, but rather that is that affection, that intimacy that come. And I'll put it this way, whenever you have intimacy with the Lord, the anointing flows easier. Uh, whenever you have intimacy with the Lord, the anointing flows easier. It becomes something that overflows out of you rather than something that you could squeeze it out. Every time when we try to squeeze an anointing out of you, what you are reg- relegating back to is that you're pleading, you're squeezing, you're trying hard. But when we go back to that, I'm a son, I have intimacy with the Lord, and this is an overflow. It is a natural outflow. The anointing just flow easy. Yeah. Mm. You guys, anything you want to add on before we wrap up the meeting? I do think that one of the reasons why Benny and Kuman's ministry works so well was, I mean, Kuman's auto call is really two, three hours. <laughs> I mean, her her auto call is longer than most typical church service because she honors and values the Holy Spirit. She's super sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Now, I d- and... and 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 she got hurt by a lot of church people in the beginning. Like uh, people didn't invite her because once they know that she was divorced, and the things that they say about her uh, was horrendous. And when someone asked her, like, uh, "What what is the price that you pay?" and she said, "Dear, I everything I pay." I paid a huge price. I everything, I I like my life. And it was actually the reporter asking her like, "What is the cost of the anointing?" And her response was everything. The horrendous things they say about you, but she she present, she present. She is not a respecter of men, and she values and s- she's sensitive to what the Holy Spirit wants to do. There are times where we kind of use power and authority, and when we release anointing, people get healed. And there are times where we co-labor together and partner with the Holy Spirit. And it says, okay, I hear you, and we do this, and things happen. People get healed. And there are also times that we yield to the Holy Spirit 
because we know his ways are higher than our ways. We know that his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And when you yield, even when things are uncomfortable, especially when negativity, what people say about us, and we, we press in and we yield, and greater things happen. Uh, and you can see by the nature and the character of her ministry that it's always Holy Spirit first. She learned not to be a respecter of men because of all the negative <laughs> things they say about her, and she has to make a decision to just stop. It's not that they, she doesn't respect them, it's just that she don't hold their words in high esteem in a way, because like, I, I'm I can't tell you the things that they said about her, but uh, at that uh, in those times, a woman minister would not be really recognized. Plus, you're talking about a woman who is divorced. So you just think, that's like, what, 40, 50 years, 40, 50 years ago? And that's a very different time than now. Mm. Uh, and she has to push through all the persecution, but she learned to honor and respect and give time to the Holy Spirit. Uh, that can tell you like w why it works in the ministry. Yeah, it's fifty years. Yeah, it's fifty years ago. Eh? So uh, and and we, we we want that to come back. And uh, I I think I we won't go any further because uh, they are now in really in Isaiah sixty one is really the Simon of the anointing. In that chapter, right, you got so many things. You got rebuilding of cities. You got uh, bringing people out of depression. You got buying out broken hearted. You got, they got, you got. There's uh, so many things that is there, right? That, but I don't want to talk. We, d I don't think we want to talk about the assignment without the alignment first. Uh, it's always the alignment before the assignment. Papa Leif always say that, and and we want to align with the with the heart of the spirit. Then we talk about the assignment of the, of the, uh, with the spirit. And uh, it's not about doing things with the Holy Spirit. It's really about connecting with Him uh, to align our hearts with His heart. Wow, it sounds like Patrick. Our hearts with His heart and his tongue, our thoughts with His thoughts and our ways with His ways. <laughs> 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 and, and yeah, so, um, yep. Uh, I, I think we should end it. Uh, and uh, uh, let, let, me, let me pray. Uh, and then we go into announcements. Holy Spirit, we ask, Lord, that... Uh, uh, and that you will speak to us, Lord. That we will yield to what you want. We, you, we will yield to what you want. Speak to our hearts, Lord. Speak to our hearts right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. That we become a one who tarries, one who wait upon you, a one who just rests in your presence to listen to that still small voice. And follow the leading of your spirit. And you will slowly tell us how anointed we are. And well, Lord, we want to align with your heart before we hear about what you assign us to. And if the alignment is correct, the assignment will always be great. So, Lord, we give you thanks, Lord. To our 60 over listeners, that you will spend time before we sleep aligning with your thoughts, with your heart. Holy Spirit, speak to us that we are vessels and the anointing and the oil only stop flowing when the container runs out for the widow. And so, Lord, we are containers and we want more. We want you to fill us more. And so, Lord, we give you thanks. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, all God's people say, Amen, Clement. Amen. 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 All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us right now. It is time to take up, um, you know, offering and tithe. So for those of you who are from Sokobility Church and you'd like to give your offering or tithe towards the church, uh, you may do so at this moment. And we have three different ways that you can give towards the church. Number one, you can use the uh, QR code that will be flashed up with your internet banking app. Number two, you can write a check payable to Sokability. And number three, you can actually uh, give through PayPal. So for those of you who are living overseas, this is a really great way to give towards the church. 
But I'd like to emphasize that, you know, if Sokobility is not your home church, please do keep your tie to your local church because we believe in the local church. But if you are blessed by tonight's session, you're blessed by the ministry that we're, we're doing, and you'd like to sow into what we're doing, we'll be more than happy and honored to receive them as well. All right. So I'm going to ask uh, Pastor Patrick to pray for tonight's offering. Mm. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in our hearts. That Lord, we thank you that you are living in us. That we have the mind of Christ. We have the hope of glory. We, we have the anointing within Lord, we thank you, God, for this big blessing in our lives. And Lord, as we give, Lord, we give with gratitude and we give with joy. We give uh, with a deep sense of knowing that that we are so loved. And so, Lord, we give because you first gave, and we love because you first loved. And we give knowing that, that we are already blessed, and we will see breakthroughs come our way as we discover how blessed we already are. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Patrick. All right, right now it's announcement time, and we do have quite a series of announcements. So I do invite all of you to kind of stay tuned, and because we're going to give us uh, quite a few link. All right. So first of all, we like to share about Soak Living Room. All right. So next Wednesday, we're going to continue this series called Anointing and Authority. All right. So next Wednesday, 7.30 p.m., Soak Living Room will be on Facebook Live. If you have been blessed by tonight's session, feel free to share this and feel free to tell your friends to join us next week as well. All right, so we're going to continue on this uh, month's new topic called Anointing and Authority. All right, so moving on, uh, the next announcement will be this Sunday. All right, we're very excited uh, to have our Sunday service and we have it on-site as well. So right now, we will be releasing the link for uh, this Sunday service. So for those of you who are based in Singapore and you'll be like, wow, I want to visit Sokobiti, you know, uh, I want to come and worship with you, you know, feel free that it will be on a ticketing basis. But I do want everyone to take note that each ticket admits only one person and you can only apply the tickets for yourself or your immediate family. You cannot apply tickets for your friends, all right, because we... We have regulation to adhere to, you know, during this um, COVID time. All right, so the link will be uh, up soon. All right, so just check on the comments and you can click the link to get a ticket. If you want to join us this Sunday, it will be at 10 a.m. on site and Facebook Live will also be the same time as well. And this Sunday, uh, Pastor Jeff will be uh, sharing. So Pastor Jeff, um, would you like to share, what, share a glimpse of your message? Glimpse, uh. oh. A glimpse. <laughs> uh, I, I'm going to kind of like connect. Uh, and s- uh, uh, my topic is energizing your faith. Um, and I'm going to kind of share about why sometimes faith doesn't work and sometimes we have a misconception of faith and how to tap into it, the mountain moving kind of faith. You have to when to believe God for the impossible to happen, and what what does it mean uh, to to have that? So uh, I'm not going to review everything, but uh, just join in. It's going to be exciting. Uh, I think today is a slow. Uh, it's like an anchor to what is gonna. I'm going to share about on uh, on Sunday. So uh, do tune in. Yeah. So great. All right. So moving on, we got uh, next announcement. We're going to talk about uh, the so. DNA. All right. So for those of you who are aware, uh, we are transitioning into uh, membership. You know, we are entering into a new season of Sokobility. And for those of you who ha- who are based in Singapore and identify yourself as I, hey, this is a church I want to be part of. You know, this is 
um, a church that I, I've been, you know, tuning in online or visiting on site and you'd like to know more about, you know, we like to um, highly uh, recommend people to attend this course, Soak DNA. All right. So this is this is a membership class. It's a prerequisite for you uh, to take if you want to be a member of Soakability Church. All right. So, uh, you know, what, uh, what's going to happen is this will be, um, this session are all going to be on Zoom. All right, there'll be 12, 19, 26 November and 3rd of December. All right, and this will be from 8 to 9, one and a half, 8 to 9 30. Sorry, there's a, there's a typo there. So it's 8 to 9 30 p.m. All right, so it will all be on Zoom session. And this will be a really good time to uh, understand you know, who we are as Sokability, where we are going, you know, what's our DNA. You know, and if this is after the four class that you, you've been through and be like, wow, I really align with what's been shared, what's been taught. I really love the DNA. I want to be part of so then, you know, we, we will proceed to, you know, uh, giving the membership form from there onwards. All right. But nonetheless, uh, you know, people who are interested to find out, you know, uh, to be a member, this is a very important class to take note. You cannot just sign a membership form. All right, no such thing. All right, you have to go through this uh, to really fully understand, um, you know, our DNA. And I feel like this would be a really good, you know, um, refresher course for some people who have been with us for for a while. And nonetheless, there's still got a lot of great things that we're gonna we're gonna teach you about, so that you you can be uh, you can see where we're going and be aligned with us in the same vision. All right, so. At the same time, there will also be a link to sign up. We're going to uh, send a link right now. All right, so do check out in the comment section and that link in itself, uh, you can, you know, sign up, all right, to tell us that you're interested to join this. All right, so the I just saw the links up there already. So you can just uh, click on the link if you're interested to know more about Soccer Beauty Church, our DNA. All right. So uh, moving on, thank you so much for those, you know, hungry 51 people that are still online. <laughs> it is the most exciting, most anointed is the announcement. All right. One more announcement will be the um, creative night. So, so could the, oh, okay. There's, uh, so sorry, I backtrack. So tomorrow we're having the soaking and revival. All right. So if you uh, are in Singapore and you would like to uh, come uh, get a ticket to join us to soak in God's presence, we still have a few tickets that's available. But if you can't make it you're overseas, it will be streamed online on Facebook Live as well. All right. So it will be 2 to 5 p.m. Singapore time. All right. And is there going to be a link? So there will be another link. Wow. Three links. Come on. All right, so so please click on the right link, okay, to sign up for the right thing. Okay, yeah, correct, correct. Yeah, I think that's better. All right, so uh, sorry, our, our, our admin manager just kind of shared that, you know, the best way to, to sign up for this soaking and revival event is to just go to the Facebook post, okay, because we don't want to confuse people with too many links, uh, you know, being put in the comment section. So there are still few, there are still several tickets available up for grab first come first serve, and you'd like to join on site in God's presence. You'd be like, wow! After listening tonight, you'd be like, man, I really want to you know get into the spirit. I really want to get into the presence. You know that this will be a really good event. Okay, so it'll be from two to five p.m. Uh, the link will be on the Facebook post. Just scroll down, you'll find it. Okay, and last one. Last but not least would be the Sokobly Creative um, Night that we are having. This is only an on-site event. There's no live streaming. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. So, 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 so we still have tickets uh, for 7.30 p.m. Just only about four tickets. And then we still have more tickets available for the 5 p.m. slot. Okay. So for those of you... Uh, who wants to join this? So what is this? this is so creative encounter night. Okay, so this is actually a, a event that we really uh want people to encounter the presence of God. We want people to encounter um God through many different ways. So we will have so think of this like like a 
fun fair but in heaven. <laughs> All right? It's really a lot of fun booth. You know, you go from booth to booth and, you know, there'll be people singing over you. There will be people dancing over you. There will be uh, prophetic uh, baking. There'll be kids prophesying over you. You know, so it's going to be really fun. You know, but one of the things we really want this to do is also for you to invite a pre-believer friend. All right. This, this, is, this is also a form of outreach. This is not a Christian event done for Christian. <laughs> this is a Christian event that is actually done f- to reach out to people, to pre-believer. But yes, in fact, we also do want to encourage the body of Christ, all right? So if you have someone you want to bring, you know, uh, you can sign up. And would there be like a link? I think so. Okay, the link is also in the post. Look for the post. Mm, okay. All right, it's already posted. All right, so wow, this 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 few weeks I'm like long, long announcement, but I did it. Praise the Lord. The other, all good. Patrick, was that good? Very good. Wow, wow. Any other 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 form of encouragement bef- beside that? And Patrick's birthday is on eleven eleven. There will be some crazy online sales. So I I don't know whether it's like. Patrick is having hope or fear. Is mm. he like ex- joyful, expecting something good to happen, or fearfully expecting something? I I, I think that's 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 a really good question to ask him right pr- now. A prank to happen. No, I I am just at peace. You love us, right? You love us. We know we yeah, want peace. the best for you. Right? Uh, right? Yeah, I'm I'm at in total peace. Praise the Lord. Were, yeah. were, you, were you in, in the to- stronghold of truth? It's okay as yeah. long as wow, uh, wow, why use uh, my sermon topic in the stronghold of truth? <laughs> wow, <laughs> did, did you feel <laughs> under the shelter? Of <laughs> <laughs> did, did you feel peace th- that year when Jeff and I put a cake on your face? Uh. <laughs> no, Jesus might want to prank you. Uh, Jesus okay. is a fun loving friend. Well, anyway. <laughs> 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 anyway, hey, I think another thing to stay tuned is next week. Because next week, there might be surprises for yeah. Pastor Patrick. And yeah. it might be shown online. So that is something really fun and cool to watch out for. After the agony that Jeff and I suffered. Huh? <laughs> Why? God will vindicate us. What agony? Are you <laughs> are you un-agony? <laughs> All right, never mind. Let's... Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us tonight. All right, it's time to really wrap up tonight's session. We do have the links, which is the Sunday service link and also the Soak DNA. These two are the link that's posted in the comment section tonight. And if you want to attend other service or the DNA class, click on the link and sign up. And on top of that, we, the other two links are already posted, which is the Soaking and Revival, which is happening tomorrow. And the... Uh, creative night which is on Friday evening alright so if you're interested in that just go to the post or you have to do just scroll down the Facebook our Facebook page alright so with that you know we're going to wrap it up and we just want to say thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you tomorrow on Facebook live at 2pm for our soaking and revival yep alright good night everybody bye 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 bye